Come closer. I will tell you my story. Hello. Hello, Ishiki. It's rare to see outsiders in this city. Pisco sent me to speak with you. Ma, Pisco. I like him. You've seen other outsiders? Only one. He was handsome, gentle, and kind. We were in love. But our love is forbidden. Outlawed by the cult of Kukulkan. That's awful. I'm sorry. I was sentenced to death. Tied to the cliffs and left to die. On the third day, I welcomed death. That's when he found me, the outsider. He freed me and treated my wounds. Who was he? I don't know his name. It's been many years, but I still hope to see him again. I often return to the cliffs near the condor nests and collect their feathers. They remind me of him. That's a remarkable story. Thank you for trusting me with it. Thank you for listening, Ishiki. figure out the dialect. I must be missing something. Itzamna is the son of the Maya creator god, Hunabku. He was the god of education, responsible for inventing writing and books. This made him an essential figure in the development of Maya culture. He was also god of agriculture and created farming. He even presided over doctors, healing people with the help of his red-hot hand. Usually, Itzamna took on a reptilian aspect, but he was also known as Kinichahau, a fire McCall, who is the patron of the number four and controlled drought and disease. <laughs> The Paititians made peace with each other and followed Yaska Yahweh, recently acclaimed as emperor, to a site in the mountains to begin anew, certain they will not make the same mistakes as those before them. <laughs> An Aztec influence mask, decorated with items native to the area around Paititi. Chica 
He said I'm a liar, you know? Hello? Peace Go sent me. Ah, did he? Did you say you were cast out for lying? No, Ishiki. I was cast out for telling the truth. That was my mistake. What happened? Should I say I've never seen an outsider? If no one believes the truth, it never happened. What outsiders? They dress in black and have strange weapons. They hide gold. I told the cult about the gold and the outsiders. They cast me out for lying. Lying? The gold was for them. One day, the cult will be exposed for its hypocrisy. So what do you do now? I lost everything, Ishiki. My position, power, reputation. But it took me losing all that to finally see. I had no purpose, no calling. And you found one? Yes. I serve the future by protecting the past. Queen Unuratu's line are the rightful rulers of Baititi, not the cult of Kukulkan. Everything I see, everything I hear, everything I know, now helps the rebellion. A worthy cause. I send people to steal the gold shipments the outsiders deliver from time to time. They never change the drop-off point. Sounds like you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you for sharing. It was nice talking with you. You too, Ishiki. The protectors failed and are now doomed to recover what they lost. Ishiki, would you like to hear a story? One that my mother used to tell. I would love to. You've noticed the pools throughout the city, haven't you? Do you know why they exist? No, why? We once had a queen, a very vain woman. She ordered these wells dug so that as she walked through the city, she could always see her reflection. One day, she knelt beside one of the pools and a fish surfaced. She became very angry. The ripples in the water ruined her reflection. This queen tried to capture the fish, but she slipped and fell in and disappeared. Disappeared? Many tunnels between the wells were discovered during the search, but she was never found. Some say the queen is still down there, trying to catch that fish. Thank you. That was quite the story. Villager claims to have seen a strange creature in the streets. They followed it to a walled-in alley where it disappeared. Citizen describes similar experience in Upper City, woke to discover something trying to climb in a second-story window. When she yelled, it dropped the street and disappeared. We'll continue to monitor. Thank <laughs> you. 
Judge Taka of the cult of Kukulkan vows to tie his coat to that of Yutu, descendant of the Maya. Lacking any family of his own, each Taka will live with the parents of Yutu until such time that they have built their own home and hearth. Yutu vows to tie her coat to that of each Taka. She will bear him many children, which they will raise according to the traditions of both their peoples. We leave the city at first light, which is just as well, for a terrible disease has spread across it. Dead and dying line the paths and choke the streams. Many are saying it is punishment from the gods. Journal of Adelantado Perez. Twenty fourth of November, sixteen o three. I accompanied Andreas Lopez, a group of twelve soldiers and two molosses through the jungle. The directions the Jesuits provided to Trinity were excellent, so we discovered the hidden city with little difficulty. The natives of the city welcomed us warily, but we plied them with gifts, and they reluctantly allowed us to enter the city, unaware of our true intentions. Lopez has begun to search for the artifact while we distract the city's leaders.
Someone's taking this old walkie-talkie apart. Were they making an attempt at reverse engineering, I wonder? Unaratu approached the throne through the crowd. She walked beside it, but did not sit. Why do we continue to believe this lie? She asked the crowd. Kukul Khan controls this city, and I will no longer wear a smile and pretend it is any different. I will not be his puppet, trotted out to wave and smile. The guards cut her off quickly and ushered her away. Then they advanced, with weapons drawn to disperse the crowds. It was for the best. Hello. Are you one of the outcasts? Yes, Ishiki. I'm Chaska. I'm Lara. Pisco sent me. Pisco the dead? Sent you to me? Did you lose a game of Patoli? No. A boy, Taki, lost his dice. I'm trying to win them back for him. Pisco wanted me to talk to all those who've been cast out before he gives them back to me. I'm surprised he didn't try to play you for them. He is. Ah, well, all I can tell you is this. Like Pisco, I was cast out. I lost my job and my position. But not because of an accident. Because of something I did, and would do again. What happened? Do you have any children? No. Neither do I. I did not receive the blessing of Ishel. But for my mistress, I was the midwife for her three children. I loved them like they were my own, until I lost my position. What did you do? I'm a thief, Lara. What did you steal? A jade necklace. Why? The youngest, Kiara, she saw the necklace while visiting a friend. She took it. They were coming for her. They would have cast her out. She was an only child. I said I took it. My mistress took the necklace from me and threw it on the floor, breaking it. And cast me out instead. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad for me. I would do it again. Kiara's learned her lesson, and she has a good life. As for me, I serve Ishel now through my weaving, the way my mother taught me. And my Kiara comes to visit me sometimes. Thank you for sharing that, Chaska. Kiara was lucky to have you. Be well, Ishiki. Shiki, beautiful animals, aren't they? Llamas, so gentle. Even the wild guanaco in the wilderness, they love to be petted. The gods approve.
Hello. Are you an outcast? Yes, Ishiki. Hello. I heard you talking about a white capybara. Oh, not just one. There are many of them. Pisco sent me to speak to all those who are cast out. You're a hunter. I am now. I was once a farmer, but that wasn't the life for me. I felt trapped. Forced to live up to the duties and expectations brought down by my family. I finally refused and went my own way. And a white capybara was responsible? No, Ishiki. I heard of them. One night they assaulted my field, trampled everything, but I did nothing to stop them. I just watched. They gave me an idea. A herd of this capybara, all white. What if I could hunt them? What if I could finally get away from the fields? So you did it? Best decision I ever made. My father disowned me and gave the farm to my sister, but that's fine with me. I'm a hunter now. They call me Paimo the White. <laughs> Thank you for the entertaining story, Paimo. Thank you, Ishiki. Remac, I think we have a visitor. Hello. Hello. You're Lara, aren't you? Uh... Pisco sent you. He did. I'm Moreika. <laughs> that was the second time I heard your name today, Lara. The cultists are talking about you. You're the one who started the cleansing. The one who found the key of Shakshel. I am. Oh, don't feel bad, child. The cleansing was long overdue. It must be decided. Do we continue or begin again? That's not an easy decision. Did you hear that, Remak? Deciding the fate of the world is not easy. <laughs> I like this one. You're right, Lara. It isn't. And if the cult of Kukulkan decides, they will enslave us all and call it protection. Won't they, Remak? <laughs> he doesn't talk much. The cult is acting out of fear. Fear of what? Fear of the outside. Fear of change. But the same threats that are outside are in all of us. Fear is the enemy, not change. Change is the only constant. But look at me rambling on, Remak. The lady must want to buy something to help in her search. Enjoy it. Hmm, good deal. Thank you. Come find me if you need anything else.
The legend is that the Ring of Seven stand guard over riches. But I've looked all over the place and I still haven't been able to find them. It doesn't make any sense. Why go to the trouble of making up a riddle and then not having it pay off? As it was foretold, heralded by the column of flame burning through the night, and the destruction of our temples, and the warnings of the weeping woman and the two-headed man, the strange warriors astride great deer arrived with the rising sun. They murdered the weak leaders and claimed the land and the people as their own. Peace, Carl? You've already spoken to them, haven't you? I have. But you still don't see it. They all had hope. You need to do better than that if you want to win the game, Lara. Hope is one thing. But all those who have been cast out have thrived in their new lives, despite their circumstances. Even you, Pisco. Well, I am the best Patoli player Paititi has ever known. <laughs> Not bad for a dead man. <laughs> Not bad at all. So again, what did you learn? I learned that sacrifice can make your life better. That you shouldn't be constrained by the legacy of your family. You can find your own path. Love is stronger than death and you need to believe in something greater than yourself. But ultimately, you can't control everything. It's what you make of your situation that defines you. Well said, Lara. You're sure you're not dead? <laughs> Taki thinks he lost his dice because he was unlucky. But it's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. I see that now. What did you think of Moreka, the outcast? She was expecting me. She seemed to know quite a bit about me. Ah, she knows a lot about everything, Ishiki. She has the most wondrous items in her shop. Artifacts known only to the gods. I saw. You were lucky you found her. She often travels outside of Paititi, gathering inventory. She seemed the most optimistic. Of course she is. We have a saying in Paititi. We all create destiny. We don't choose our circumstances, only our actions. A lesson my friend Taki needs to learn. Well played. Thank you, Pisco. I'll bring the dice back to Taki. these shapes be ink and when they look like airplanes? Oh, I see. They're insects of some sort. Archaeology is a very delicate field of study. You have to put yourself in the mindset of people and cultures who died centuries before you were even born. Humans interpret strange phenomena based on what they already know. If the Inca had seen planes, they might have assumed they were some sort of bird. Given that, these shapes may not be insects after all. Some of them look more like fish. So, 
Do you know what's missing in this city? Love. It used to drift on the air, like the scent of hibiscus. That scent went away when Unuratu's husband, Sairi, died. Theirs was an infectious love. Everywhere they went, they were locked in hand. They would shop the markets together on sunny days like today, and I could swear the stalls would brighten just a bit as they passed. I had never seen two people more in love. I hope that once all of this fighting is over, that the scent of hibiscus will return. I found your dice, Taki. Oh, thank you. Didn't you say Pisco stole your dice? Everyone knows Pisco steals. According to him, you wanted to play a game and you lost. He wouldn't let me play again. Just one more roll and I would have won. Pisco wanted you to know. It's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. Now that I have my dice back, I can practice more. Thanks again, Ishiki. that major events in life can be traced back to a single moment? I do. Take what's happening now. Had Amaru and Saidi not fought that day during the famine, and had Saidi not insisted, despite Amaru's wishes, that it should be him who would go beyond the safety of the borders to hunt for the village, perhaps things would be different today. You see, Amaru felt responsible for his brother's death. I heard him the night they pulled Sairi's body from the wilderness. He was beside himself with grief. I think that was the moment. It broke Amaru. He took complete control of Paititi after that. He wanted to protect us all because he couldn't protect Saidi. I caught a fish once at home, in the well. Papa says it's because there are tunnels filled with water under some houses. Funny, huh? I can't figure out what this means. A little advice. Stay out of the wilderness, friend. Something dangerous prowls out there. This is as near as I ever go. And even then, I make sure not to keep my back to the jungle for too long at a time. Ah! 
Have you met Paimo Ishiki? The fool thinks the gods punished him. <laughs> Lazy bastard. to plunder, outsider. Great warriors have failed the challenges. The hidden places offer rich rewards, if you survive. What are you talking about? A rite of passage. A test to separate the corn from the stock. A trial that all cultist warriors must face. Nothing for the likes of you. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm capable of. Then find the path of battle. See if you and your arrogance can survive it. Unurato and her rebels are the true sons and daughters of Paititi, if you're asking. I'm not the only one who thinks it either. Just the only one with the guts to say it, apparently. The cleansing is upon us, and it should be Unurato's line that sacrifices Kukulkan to restore the sun, and not the other way around. But thoughts like that have a way of getting people dead, so it's no wonder they aren't voiced. Sazeni. Where is my mother? She's settling matters between the guards and Hakan. What's it like outside Baititi? Well, a lot of things. It's a very big world. Bigger than Paititi? <laughs> Bigger than 100 Paititis. What? Will you take me there? I think your mother might have something to say about that. Hmm. What you're looking for is in there. How will I know when I found the right chamber? By the smell of death. If you survive, you can find your way back through the old irrigation system. I'll meet you there. Be careful. The cult often patrols there. A ceremonial whistle used during human sacrifices. The sound emitted from the skull-shaped instrument has been compared to the tormented screams of the dying and the dead. Its shrill cry is said to clear a path to the underworld for the recently deceased. The death whistle has also been used as an instrument of war, its cry striking fear into the heart of the unknowing enemy. <laughs> The surging population and lack of civil planning caused the settlement many problems. Farmers clear-cut jungle to use the fertile riverbanks for their crops, resulting in a devastating flood in the first heavy rains. 
Over hunting forced hunters to travel ever further to find game. Several groups, each vying for a controlling interest in the settlement, debated often fiercely on the best manner of solving these problems. Yeah, yeah.